The salutatorian honor is bestowed on the graduate who has earned the second highest GPA for coursework taken at Archbishop Hannon High School. He or she must have been enrolled for no fewer than four years and earned a minimum of 25 credits. This year, we are pleased to announce that the salutatorian for the class of 2021 is Ms. Kathleen Grace Rush. I am proud to present to you Kate, who will now deliver the salutatorian address. Hello. In case you are not aware, my name is Kate Rush, and I am the salutatorian of the class of 2021. While I am certainly honored to be speaking to you this evening, I can't help but feel that the GPA which brought about this honor is due to mere coincidences in my course selections over my five years at Hannon. Just the right number of AP classes and just the right number of A's, and suddenly I'm asked to write a speech for you people. I guess I should have skipped out on AP Gov with Coach Baird, saving myself from both speech writing and little balled up pieces of paper being thrown into my water bottle. Thank you, Coach Baird. While I was reflecting on what to write for this speech, on how I would say a multitude of very profound and inspirational things, I realized that I have no special wisdom pulled from the sky to give you. I am not your superior, and I have not been gifted with any divine revelations recently. So, I decided to speak using only the two sources I can confidently draw upon, my own life and my classes at Archbishop Hannon High School. Thinking back on my many courses, the instances which stand out to me the most are personal paradigm shifts, moments that challenged my fundamental understanding of and approach to the world. One which seems most relevant to our current state in life came during my 10th grade AP Lang class. We were diving into our segment on college and reading an essay entitled College Pressures by William Zinser, who was, at the time, the head of a residential college at Yale. Zinser describes the overwhelming anxiety of his Yale students, their conviction that every grade can be damning, every decision is final, and the entirety of their future rests upon their shoulders at every single moment of their college career. When Zinser tries to assure them that there will be room to change, grow, explore, and even fail, they don't want to hear it. He says, and here's a quote I pulled directly from my beloved orange Norton Reader textbook. They don't want to hear such liberating news. They want a map right now that they can follow unswervingly to career security, financial security, social security, and presumably a prepaid grave. <laughs> Morbid, I know, but true. That's why this quote in particular has stuck with me for two and a half years to the point that I could almost recite it from memory. It straight up smacked me in the face on a Tuesday in 10th grade. It was at that moment that I realized that over my middle school and high school years, I had not really been living, I had been waiting. Every second of every day, I spent waiting for the next second of every day. On Monday morning, I would think about my test Monday afternoon. On the first week of the month, I'd think about the pep rally my student council had to plan for the second week of the month. At every cross country meet, I'd think about the end of that cross country meet and the end of the next cross country meet and the end of all cross country meets until I did not have to run ever again. <laughs> Sorry, Coach Davis. <laughs> every school day, I waited for the bell. Every weekday, I waited for the weekend. Every school year, I waited for the summer. And every summer, I waited for college and adulthood and beyond. And I loved high school, even then. But I wasn't living at school. I wasn't living anywhere. I was just waiting for the future. For me, each moment was dead on arrival. William Zinser goes on to say his desire. What I wish for all students is some release from the clammy grip of the future. I wish them a chance to savor each segment of their education as an experience in itself and not as grim preparation for the next step. From that point forward, that was my wish for myself as well. I tried my very best to focus not on what I had to do later 
or when my work would be over and focus instead on the act of running a mile repeat, the act of taking an A push seven minutes of awesome quiz, the act of taking on the persona of the imminent Brad Bassetti in front of the entire school, the act of riding the Popeye ride at Universal a third time, even though we would be late for the bus. And my life began to slow down, and I began to live for the first time in many years. This wish is now my wish for all of us on a grander scale. High school was not, as Zinser says, a grim preparation for college. College is not a grim preparation for a job or for grad school. A job is not a grim preparation for financial security, a house, and everything that comes after. None of these milestones are grim preparations for the next thing. They're not even preparation at all. They're experiences in and of themselves. I know that it is difficult, but I implore you from personal experience to treat them as such. Reflect on the joys you have experienced over these past five years, not because they led to this moment, but because each of them held their own weight at their own time. Revel in being 18 in the summer after high school. Delight in showing up at your first college class and discussing something intriguing and feeling very challenged and a little bit humbled. Join a club and change your major and go to a party and change your life plan and learn things that you actually want to learn because you're passionate about them and not because they lead to your desired GPA or job or career or salary. We have no way of knowing the future and attempting to do so will result in living half a life. And I am speaking as much to myself as I am speaking to all of you. Strive to enjoy every second and every stage of life for what it is. I'm not going to attempt thank yous because I know I will leave out an unpardonable number of people. So I would just like to end by saying, I love you all, students, teachers, administrators, friends, and family members. I am endlessly grateful for the opportunity you gave me to have epiphanies on random Tuesday afternoons in an environment where I could both love others and feel loved at all times. You taught me how to live, and you made the living so very wonderful. Thank you, and I wish you all a fantastic collection of moments, one after another. <laughs>